But what I really want, I want clean bikes like this Bianchi before I completely strip them to pieces. Portable pressure watches. The only problem is, they're a lot more money than I had to hope for. No. Cut a long story short, the reason I bought this, I found one on eBay for 135 quid. Today's video is going to be a long one about cleaning, cleaning bikes. This one's called the Dirt Blaster. Obviously in an ideal world you get your mum to do all your cleaning, but if your mum won't clean your bikes like mine, this video is for you. Okay, I need to clean my bikes. It's something I should do more frequently than I do after using them. But what I really want, I want to clean bikes like this Bianchi before I completely strip them to pieces. I want to get as much of the dirt, grease and grime off them to save time in the parts washer later. Now, up until now, I've been using brush kit. I think I got this from Amazon years ago. Brush kit and some muck off and then a bucket of water. And that's worked fine to get mud off, but I want something more powerful. I want a, I want a pressure washer or a jet washer or a power washer. The only problem is I've got outdoor space, got roof, terrace, garden and a yard. One's got power, no water. One's got water, no power. And the yard where I really want to do it, which has got the best draining, has neither. So it would mean running probably 50 meter power cable and hose pipe, which is just not practical. But what I have found is portable pressure washers. Portable pressure washers, battery powered. They're a lot more money than I had to hope though. Way more, like most things, more money than I want to spend. But I did find one. I went for a Karcher KHB5. Cut a long story short, the reason I bought this, I found one on eBay for 135 quid. It, at the time, a few weeks ago when I bought this, it was the lowest price one I could find. All the different power tool brands have versions of them, or most of them do. Uh, DeWalt, Ryobi, Bosch, Karcher. Karcher had a couple of models, they had a lower, a lower voltage, lower pressure version. Now I've got Bosch power tools, I've got, Actually, I've got a Bosch lawnmower and strimmer, 36 volt, which I have the batteries for, but Bosch didn't do a pressure washer for that range. They did a pressure washer, but it took different batteries. So I've got Milwaukee drills and power tools, and again, I've got the, so I've got the batteries for those, the 18 volt batteries, but they didn't do one. If I'd had the DeWalt, if I had DeWalt power tools and had DeWalt batteries, then it might have been more cost effective for me to get the the DeWalt version of this, the unit without batteries, but as I needed a unit and batteries, I think I'll, at the time we were buying this, it was gonna, this would have, this kit I've got here with two batteries and a set of suction hose with it as well, would have cost probably the best part of 250 quid, complete with Amazon labels there. The Amazon, the eBay seller of this claims it's in nearly new condition, but we'll find out about that later. So, I did quite a lot of research, trying to figure out which would be the best one. Um, they all look much and much the same, although the headline power and pressure figures for the different ones, I, mean, I think the DeWalt one was the highest pressure, but the way they achieve that is with different sized nozzles. So they all look like basically the same base unit, and then they stick a different nozzle on the end. So the smaller the diameter of the nozzle, the more pressure they achieve, the greater the headline pressure figure they achieve, but the thinner, the finer the jet of water, and vice versa. You could, so if they make the, the the nozzle on the end of this thing bigger, it's lower pressure, but you get a, more water. So oddly enough, if you've got for a pedal bike, you don't need that big a jet of water. So the higher pressure one might actually be better because you've got more power. Whereas if you need to do a whole car, especially or a van, you might actually be better with the lower pressure one because you're going to get more liters per hour albeit at a lower pressure, but I basically went with the lowest cost one at the time. So we, we need to test it out. I didn't want to take a gamble and spend 250 quid on one because I don't really know how good they're going to be, or even if they're going to work. But let's get this out of the box. Make sure we've got what the eBay seller said we were getting, and then we'll test it out on I've got quite a few very dirty bikes. So this was the original eBay listing. The title was Karcher KHB5, cordless pressure washer and Karcher SH5 self-priming hose. Starting bid, 
129 pounds plus 15.45 postage i was the only bidder so I paid a total of 144 pounds and 45 pence the item description from the seller was karcher khb5 cordless pressure washer and karcher sh5 self priming hose also included is charger and two batteries used but in good working order so in the pictures it looks to be in phenomenal condition let's get it all out of the box see if it matches the description and pictures and then see if it works and test it out on a bike okay looks cool, cool. <laughs> it's got some water left in it batteries came partially charged 69 percent in this one i've just plugged the other one in because there's only a few percent left in that yeah, looks in fantastic condition, almost new. Threaded this on right, I need to find a bucket. We'll pop this in a bucket of water and test it out on a bike. The first bike I really want to clean is this Bianchi, the first project bike before I strip it to pieces. But that is not going to be a particularly good test for this because it's already quite clean. It's really just need, it really needs degreasing rather than cleaning. But I have a Cannondale bad boy that I've been riding to work and back for the last few months and I haven't cleaned it since, there's no since, I just haven't cleaned it. And it looks like I've been off-roading it, but it's just, it's just dirt off the roads of South East London. It's so dirty, there's a German fella in the gym I go to, it's, it's really annoying him. Every time I see him, he's coming up to me, you need to clean that bike. I need to clean the bike, I need to get my guards, and then there's a, there's a list of things I need to do. Not doing things properly is a, it's a concept that the Germans just don't understand. So yeah, it's, it was upsetting him so much, I uh, put some oil on the chain, which went rusty when I rode it in the snow. But that didn't solve the problem, it just hid it. It didn't get him off my back either, he, he still wants that bike cleaned. So right, I'll show you the cannon now, it's disgusting. And we'll test this out on the Cannondale bad boy. If it can clean that, it can clean anything. It's not mud on there. The, the dirt off the South East London roads is like, it's a mix of broken car, cement, tarmac, and mud. Strong and cement. Okay, look at the state of this Cannondale bad boy. It may look like I've been off-road on this Cannondale bad boy, but all the dirt you see is just from the roads of South East London. I've ridden this bike to work every day this winter, so that is an entire winter's worth of dirt. I haven't cleaned it once. When I rode it in the snow, the chain went rusty, so I didn't clean it, I just added some oil, and what that's done is thrown a mix of oil, dirt, and rust all over the rear wheel. There's so much dirt on the front derailleur, it's cemented it in position, it no longer moves. So this would be a pretty good test for any pressure washer. Okay, I've got some muck off. But would you like just water first of all? This one's called the 
got lost. Safe. This one's more powerful than the dirt last time. So it's done a phenomenal job at removing all the dirt from this bike and there was a lot of dirt on this bike. Because I didn't use any cleaning products or a brush, all that's left is grease, oil and surface rust which pressure washers won't remove. What I'd need to do now is use some degreaser, some bike cleaning product like a muck off, spray it up all over use a brush to get the worst of it off and then use the pressure washer to shower that off. However, all the dirt from the hard to reach areas around the gears, the derailleurs is gone. So it's, it's done a phenomenal job. Now, let's test it out on some dirty concrete in the yard and see if it can clean, not quite a patio, but see if it can clean dirty concrete. Okay guys, I'm really pleased with that. The Kartra KHB5 8 volt battery powered power washer. It worked really well on the bike. I did two buckets on the bike, probably had at least five liters in each bucket, so around 10 liters. That was, the, the Cannondale was really dirty. I didn't use any cleaning products. I wanted to see how powerful the pressure washer was on its own, or a brush. What I really need to do now is get some muck off or some degreaser, because that's what's left, is grease and grime that no pressure washer will get off without taking the paint off. So what I need to do now is apply some degreaser, like muck off, go out with a brush, and then use another bucket load of water, rinsing, washing the... Uh, the grease and degreaser off. It's perfect. Bikes are probably the perfect application for this. Something small like a bike where you really need to have a small concentrated jet because the way they get, these have their specifications say they have comparable pressure to a mains powered, mains water fed pressure washer. I think the DeWalt one has even higher than, even higher pressure than the mains powered ones. The way they all get that is by putting smaller jets I think I said this earlier, they put smaller jets in the end, so you've got a finer jet of water at comparable pressure to a, a mains operated one. So less litres per minute. So it's a very concentrated blast of water. If you need a water cannon, 
this is not suitable. So for something like a bike, where else would you go and get muddy doing? Golf, maybe your golf clubs, golf trolley, something like that. Perfect. If you've got to do a patio, I tried it on the concrete. It works, it will do it, and on the stairs. But you're going to need to keep refilling the bucket. It's a very fine jet, so you're going to be there forever. If you've got access to mains, if you've got access to mains power and mains water, I personally would get a mains powered pressure washer. If you don't, these are great, but they're a compromise. The real compromise is that you're going to have to keep filling the bucket with water. What I really need to do is I'm going to have to find myself like a 20 litre water container on the internet that I can connect this to rather than keep refilling the bucket. And obviously if you're traveling or if you're planning to use it traveling, that's a constraining factor. You've got to take enough water with you for whatever the application. And water's heavy. 20, I mean, 20 litres, 20 litres, 20, 25 litres is all you really want to carry at one go. And it's quite bulky. So yeah, if you've got a cleaner patio, this is a last resort. The, the bigger the area, the, the bigger, the, the more you're going to be there and the more trips with buckets of water you're, you're going to take. But for a bike, it's perfect. They also do, what I found when I was looking, when I was doing a little bit of research online, there's a, there's a model down from this. I think it was the OC, OC3, might have been the OC4, there was a couple of capacities of water, and I, can't, I didn't really see the point of that, because it, at the time, because it was a lower pressure, it just looked like a shower, but now it makes sense, because it's lower pressure than these, and it, and it, it has a built-in bucket, so you're, only, you, you're transporting just a few, I think it might be three, four, five litres maximum, but that makes sense, because if you are travelling with something, say you're going mountain biking, and you really just want to rinse off fresh mud, not grime that's built up over months like on my calendar if you just want to rinse give the bike a shower that makes sense because lower pressure but you're going to get more coverage with less water so if you just need to give the bike a shower rinse fresh mud off be the same for your golf clubs if you just want to rinse if you literally just need a portable shower they're going to be fantastic because you'd be able to rinse off one maybe two bikes with a much smaller bucket of water than you're gonna to need to travel with one of these. So yeah, I definitely recommend one of those. I'll get the, I'm gonna try and find a uh, 20 litre or so, maybe 25 litre water container on the internet, get it connected, and when I do, I'll give you an update. But if you're looking for something to clean the bike, this, I think the latest model is the KHB6, this was the this has already been superseded, but I've got a good deal on this on eBay. So thanks for watching. I hope if you're considering a battery powered pressure washer, this helps you make your decision. I would imagine it's a similar story for all the different brands. There are similar, most of the ones I saw, similar voltage, and as I said, the, the, the only way they achieve the different pressures, the litres per, I think if you look at the spec, the litres per, the litres of water per hour, regardless of the brand, are pretty much the same, because there can only be so many companies in the world that make the components inside these. They all had comparable litres per minute, and the way each different, and different brands sold them, you know, had a different headline pressure to sell it, the way they achieve that is, you're either going to get a, finer nozzle or a uh, thicker nozzle. The lower the pressure, the bigger the nozzle, the bigger the jet of water. The higher the pressure, the more concentrated the jet's gonna be on its most powerful setting. So take that into consideration. Right, enough waffle. I'll update you when I update my mop bucket to a more suitable water container. See you in the next one. Toodles. I just remembered something I forgot to mention, the batteries. Now I've got two batteries for this. This one I was using was more than half charged when it came. Now I've done, I did two buckets of water on the bike. I used another bucket of water doing the concrete and the stairs. So I uh, did around 15 litres of water and this has still got 12% in it. So 
on that basis you're going to get let's say in the region of 30 litres of water per battery minimum also the other battery I plugged in really nice feature of these not only does it give you a percentage of the charge left that one the one that's charging tells you exactly how long it's got left in minutes to charge so I'm quite impressed with the batteries I've got Milwaukee power tools and I've got Bosch battery power tools and the college of batteries appear at first, and this is the first time I've used it, so it appear is the right word there. They appear to have a pretty good battery system. So batteries are not the constraining factor of these. Water supply is the constraining factor of these. You know, I've got two batteries of this. I'm going to be able to do that. These batteries will do more water than I could physically carry. I need a van load of water for those two batteries. So yeah, batteries are great. Constraining factor of these is water supply. Toodles.